Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason, and this is where I talk about all things story. The story we're talking about today is the latest novel by Jeff Vandermeer titled Dead Astronauts. But before I talk about that novel, I feel like I should talk about this one. This is the Southern Reach trilogy. The first trilogy, or the first book, I should say, being Annihilation, that I discovered of Jeff Vandermeer and it completely blew me away. I'd have to say that a book didn't affect me so much or a story or stories since I read H.P. Lovecraft at about 13. When I discovered Lovecraft, it just completely changed my perception of what storytelling can be. And I was hooked for many years. I still am hooked. I have all of his collection behind me on the shelf here. And I can't think of a more influential writer to me. But I did get a very similar reaction when I read Annihilation for the first time. It it pulled me in with its its wonder and its mystery and just the sheer alienness of the whole thing. And you can tell it is definitely influenced by Lovecraft. It's influenced by Roadside Picnic another book I have behind me, also a film titled Stalker by Tarkovsky. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. it is, it's a long film, it's a beautiful film, and one that if you are a fan of Jeff Vandermeer's universe with The Southern Reach, I think you could appreciate. But anyway, I'm talking about this because I want you to know how I feel about the author and what he's created and how much I really admire it and how much it's affected me. I even have his craft book behind me titled Wonder Book, and that is an amazing work in itself. So Dead Astronauts. What is the hook? What is Dead Astronauts about? Well, it is the official slash unofficial sequel to the book Born, which was his follow-up to the Southern Reach trilogy. Now that is a book that I that I both enjoyed and didn't enjoy. The world building was was a little bit cartoonish for my taste at times, and, and maybe it's just my lack of imagination, but it was really difficult for me to picture his creations in a way that was realistic. I mean, I just, I pictured this giant flying bear, if you haven't read Born. There's a giant flying bear, and I don't know, maybe it's my lack of imagination, like I said. It was a little difficult for me to get into, and the narrative was not quite there. But anyway, dead astronauts. Um, there are three astronauts, dead astronauts, that are found and born. Presumably, this is the tale of those three people. And those three people are named Grayson, Chen, and Moss, each of them being unique in their own way. And they are up against uh, the company we know from Born, which is this organization or institution that is literally warping time and space and, and biology and the environment and everything in between and turning the world into just kind of a twisted, mutated mess. So that's the gist. I mean, they are up against the company trying to bring it down, trying to presumably stop what it is set out to do. So what did I think? Let's start with character. We have our, our main protagonists, Grayson, uh, Chen, and Moss, and they're wrestling with their own demons, some of which are being inhuman, to say the least. We're following them through this twisted landscape uh, where they are attempting to bring down the company, face Charlie X, who is our, our antagonist in this tale. But the book, the way it's written, which I'm going to get to shortly, cuts their tale short. It's a very fragmented, oddly paced, oddly structured novel that I think is a little bit difficult to get into. So I don't want you to think that these characters aren't compelling in the least, but I feel that because it's very heavily expository in its telling and it made me kind of bored to be honest with you, it's, it's difficult to get into a story for me personally, unless I feel like I'm down there with the action. I'm living these things through the character's eyes. And I think that brings us to the plot or the story itself. And the story, as I mentioned, it's disconnected. It's it's fragmented. It's, it's kind of all over the place. It's this very twisted, kaleidoscopic narrative. I don't know that there's a better way I can describe it without getting into spoilers. There's, there's time travel, at least it appears to be. There's characters who appear one way and appear as something else, or maybe are different people in different timelines. My one regret is that I wish I would have read this more slowly, more carefully, carefully because I do feel like I could have appreciated it much more if I would have slowed down. Part of the failing with this novel is that it didn't keep my attention. Now, I appreciate everything Jeff is trying to do here with the structure, 
with the concepts, with not adhering to classical narrative, but to a degree, this is a great example of why a traditional narrative has its place, right? Uh, we're hardwired for it. It's, it's compelling. It holds our attention. It brings us to hopefully a cathartic conclusion. And while there is some great, great character work and narrative work done in this book, the fragmented structure and the confusing structure of it kind of makes it fall flat a little bit for me. And while we kind of lose our characters, I should say the narrative switches to other characters about a third of the way through the novel. There is some very compelling character work that happens, and that by far was my favorite part of the entire novel, and I really felt it was turning around. And it did for me to a degree, I guess, but um, I still felt that while there's so much power in Jeff's words and the way he wrote things, uh, sometimes the narrative just didn't match in that quality. So let's talk about the most divisive part of this novel, I believe, the writing itself, or what I like to call the cinematography of a novel. This novel is highly experimental. It's extremely poetic. And Jeff really shows what an amazing line-to-line -line writer he can be. He is, he is a master of prose. And, and I know that earlier on in the review, I talked a little bit about how it didn't hold my attention completely. Other times it did amazingly. And if you're a writer, I think this is an amazing, amazing example of the power of the written word and how film just really can't compare to it in some aspects. So if you are trying to experiment with different forms of storytelling or to ramp your writing up to the next level, I highly recommend you read this book. It's very akin to something like House of Leaves. So like I said, while I was reading this book, I was just kind of both captivated and bored by the prose itself. Sometimes it really just hooks you in and just completely overtakes you. And other times uh, you're just kind of scanning the words and not really absorbing them completely. At least that was my experience. I felt like that was really due to the heavy exposition because the moments in this book that are actually unfolding before our eyes in real time are extremely powerful. And like I've said again and again and again in this review, I am just completely amazed with uh, the skill of Jeff Vandermeer. So should you read it? Well, hopefully what I've said so far has allowed you to come to that conclusion yourself, but I'll, I'll sum it up for you. So if you're looking for something akin to the Southern Reach trilogy, something that does have depth, something that is multi-layered and has a lot of great character work, but is something that is relatively easy to follow, I don't think you're going to find that here. You will find depth here. You will find the complexity that you know and love from Jeff Vandermeer. However, it's presented in a very fragmented and somewhat confusing way that may not be for everybody. So if you don't wanna work at this novel, if you wanna just kind of lay back and you like to enjoy books just almost passively as if it's unfolding before your eyes and your brain doesn't have to work too much, uh, you're probably not gonna like this one. But if you wanna dive deep, and I mean dive deep, and, and just savor every single word and every sentence, I think there's a lot to be had with reading this. I, for one, think I need to read this novel again in fact, I feel like if you haven't read Born, I would highly suggest you read Born first. Born is a much more accessible novel uh, that takes place in the same universe. However, there are some things in that book that do lead into this book. I don't think it's completely necessary, but if you want to get a taste of this world without the kind of, I guess, confusing nature of it, then check that one out first. So with that said, I'm going to have to give... Dead Astronauts by Jeff Vandermeer, a 6 out of 10. As much as I appreciate the writing and the craft that went into this, storytelling, whether it be a novel, a film, a video game, any other kind of medium that's trying to tell a story, you need to hold the interest of the consumer. Now, I know that sounds like I'm being lazy or, or maybe I'm just too stupid to get it, but I, I, I still feel that it's the job of the writer to be as accessible as possible. Even if you want to go to uh, deep places or cover complex themes, I feel like a little more hand-holding is necessary. As creators, 
we just really want people to experience our stories, to feel our characters, and to be there with them. And the more confusing or the more experimental you get with your with your storytelling, the less of a chance there is for that to happen. If you're in for a wild ride that really takes a lot of effort and, and you really want to put in that effort, then I highly recommend this novel. I just don't think it's meant for everyone, and I don't think it was written for everyone. So I, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm being unfair here. I am definitely a kind of person who who does appreciate experimental writing like I, I loved house of leaves right for for all of its faults and all of its kind of meandering uh the atmosphere just just held my interest and with dead astronauts there was a little bit more of that overly cartoonish nature that for whatever reason is just it's really difficult for me to visualize and maybe if he would have pulled it back a bit like he did in the southern reach where i think with with that series he was able to create these alien landscapes and these these weird mutated ideas but it just felt real it felt tangible and i could see it for all of its horror and you can tell by reading this book that the environment is extremely important to jeff vandermeer it's very much a a love letter to the untouched beauty of nature and everything we're doing as humans right now in our power to destroy it and and tear it apart i wouldn't say this novel's overly preachy in that regard but there are a few passages that really do bring that to the surface he just seems to be uh very interested in in our place in the world and uh what we're doing to it and and really what we shouldn't be doing to it and the possible repercussions of that. Well, that's it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to see me create and not just critique, please check out my series, Worth 1000 Words, where I write a 1000 word short story every week based on a piece of artwork with no outline. And if you'd like to support the channel, give me a like if you like the video. Comment down below, have you read this novel? Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? Have you read any of his other work? And I also wrote a book. It's a dark coming of age novel titled The Field, and it is completely free. You can get it on Amazon or anywhere eBooks are sold. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.